Hey guys, okay, um, my name is Kylie Williams. I'm gonna be the student butler nurse that's gonna show you a few clinical skills today. Um, this first video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an occupied bed um, and also place a patient on the bedpan. We're using my teddy bear here, Rusko. Um, he's, shout out to him for letting me do all this on him today. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to place a patient on the bedpan. Um, this is going to be my bedpan. <laughs> so first you want to walk in the room, um, you want to soap in, um, definitely knock and then let them know who you are. Um, tell them, you know, what you're going to be doing or what you're here for. Most of the time it's because their call light is going off so they kind of already have an idea. Um, so once you get all that done, then you're just going to be like, okay. Um, so then you're going to pull back the covers, um, to expose what we need to work with here. Um, and then if there's side rails, you'll put the one on your side down and leave the other one up. Um, you want to raise the bed to a comfortable position so you're not hurting your back. Um, and you also want to make sure that they're flat because we're going to roll them. So once all that's situated, um, I'm going to have him roll this way so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing from this side. So if he can roll on his own, you'll have him, um, you know, grab onto the side rail over there and then just slip on his side. If you need help or if you need to grab somebody, definitely do so. Um, so, Rusko, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to go ahead and roll towards the wall over there. So then once he's rolled over, you're going to take your bedpan and you're going to place it underneath him like so. And then you're just going to ask him to roll back. And then this is when you would go ahead and put the bed back down, raise their head to a comfortable position, and then also raise their legs just a little bit and less contraindicated. Um, then you would cover them back up to ensure privacy. You would leave the room, hand them the call light, put the bell rail back up, and um, let them know to tell you when they are finished. So now we're gonna slide back in here um, and say that he's finished, his call light's going off. You definitely wanna um, respond to that as promptly as possible. You know, sometimes we get caught up in things, um, but definitely get to it as soon as you can. Quit, my cat is attacking me from under the table. Um, so then once he's done, you're gonna do basically the same thing you did to start, you know, raise the bed, put the bed rail down, make it flat, um, uncover him. Make sure you have gloves on for this part. I don't have gloves. Um, you would already want to have foamed back in um, and make sure you foam out the first time too. Definitely always just do the hand hygiene no matter what. Um, so this time you're gonna be like, okay, so we're gonna roll back. Um, but when he's rolling back, make sure that you find the bedpan as soon or before he starts rolling. Um, Cause otherwise it's gonna flip with him and then that just causes a mess. So Fresco, if you could go ahead and roll for me. And roll, I hold on to it. I take it, place it over here. Give them the wipes or the toilet paper or whatever your facility uses if they can do their own perineal care. If not, um, help them out by going front to back um, and then replacing their Depends or their Brief or new underwear or whatever the case may be. Um, and then you can roll them back over. Um, replace the bed covers. Resituate the bed however they so choose, whatever's comfortable, whatever's necessary. Um, and then ask them if they need anything else, like a drink or a snack. Um, make sure that they're comfortable. And then, yeah, that's all for that. Um, the next one I'm going to show you, um, let's just say during the bedpan, they, we accidentally spilt it. We, you know, made a mess of the bed. Or say a patient wet themselves and it went all the way through the bed pad, the sheet, Got on the top covers. For my scenario, I'm not going to say the pillowcase got hurt just because I don't really have an extra pillowcase lying around. Um, so then what we're going to do for that, I don't know if you can see this that well. Um, so you would come in, you want to make sure you have a trash bag, you want to foam in, um, let them know again what you're going to be doing. Just be like, we're going to change you real quick um, and we're also going to change your bed sheets too because they're soiled. Um, get some gloves on, make sure you have a trash bag nearby for the dirty linens. Um, and then you're going to pull the covers back. You wad those up, place them aside. Um, you're going to go ahead and remove the pillow. Like I said, my pillowcase didn't get dirty. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and, and oh, 
So I've got all my new linens here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna have him do again is um, once we've had the bed all situated, side rails and everything, um, it's pretty much the same procedures throughout for those kinds of things. Just make sure the patient stays safe um, and make sure that you're able to work without hurting yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and roll him. If he falls off, I don't know. Um, and then what you would do from this side is you're gonna untuck the sheet um, that's down below and then this is my bed pad. Um, so what I would do is I'm actually gonna, he's gonna fall. Please don't fall, okay. So you're gonna just untuck it and then you're gonna start by rolling it like so. Um, you wanna like tuck it under the patient as much as you can get it before rolling them just cause then it makes it a little bit easier to grasp from the other side or for your coworker to get it if they're helping.